and welcome to The Good, The Bad, and The Podcast, the show where we take a given movie genre and we look at the good examples that are so good they they have to be called marvelous, those bad examples that really mar our opinion of them, and those ugly examples <laughs> that I can't do this, guys, I'm so sorry, <laughs> the snappy intros <laughs> that are so marvelously ugly that they make us marvel at them. Hello, guys, I am Mark. Hey, I'm Kelly. And I'm Charles. And our special guest today is... Hey, guys. I am Micah. Yeah, welcome back, Hey-o. Micah. We had to bring him hey. back because he's got... Because we've already done Marvel movies. He had, to, <laughs> he, had to, he had to come back and defend it. He did Marvel movies. This is a Marvel MCU movies episode. Right, right. I did Marvel character movies, like movies that star Marvel characters. And even though these are all Marvel characters, I did not specifically do marvel cinematic universe which mark like you i'm a big nerd about and i absolutely love the whole mcu thing it's gonna be good well and uh also like micah did kind of introduce us to the fantastic four movie from the the 90s the roger (laughs) corman one (laughs) and to that we owe you a debt of gratitude sir so plus plus that was quite a while ago actually and there's like now that they've completed like phase one two and three and like this whole series like right there's a ton in fact none of these movies have been released i don't think the lot when, when micah did that pick so yeah that's true, I think that's true. yeah oh yeah wow. yeah yeah that that would be right time flies what, guys what uh what year was that movie was that 1994 yeah uh, yes. yeah 1994 okay. yes yeah did you never watch it mark no, I didn't. Oh, you it reminds, must. It's it reminds me of the uh, no the Arrested Development, the Arrested Development character Debris, who played <laughs> in the TV in the world of the TV show. She was in a Fantastic Four adaptation. It was also really terrible. So I always assume it's the same thing, but it's not. It, it was. Horrible. I don't think it was ever officially released. Like we found it on YouTube. But they just had to make it to keep the. I don't. Know, the I don't remember all the reason behind it, but yeah, it was. No, that's basically the reason why is because they had. Um, I, I think it was Fox at the time was scrambling to keep the rights, <laughs> and so they had to throw something together. Is Roger Corman, the you know real B movie producer that put it together, and oh, it's just yeah, it's I terrible. Mean, <laughs> I, I'm one. There, there's a documentary about it. I haven't seen it. But um, <laughs> I, I'm assuming that, you know, all the, the gaffers and the uh, assistant cameramen, all of them were just sitting back there just smoking cigarettes. Just <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the lighting's not right. Yeah, who's going to see this? Yeah, we know. We know. It's due for a rewatch. I really... <laughs> <laughs> I need it in my life again. What were your picks for that one, actually? Go ahead and remind us, Micah. Uh, okay, so Fantastic Four was my ugly because I, th- I think it was my ugly because it's just really fun um my your bad. good was winter soldier i remember that yes okay my good was winter soldier and my bad was spider-man 3 yeah oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. emo spider-man emo spider-man that's, that's right good. and what are yours mark for this episode all right my picks are doctor strange from 2016 infinity war from 2018 and Captain Marvel from 2019. So any, uh, y'all want to venture your guesses as to which which is which? Well, it's just hard because two of these movies are really good, in my opinion. Yeah. And, it's, and then one is not so good. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to say Captain Marvel is your bad. But then that means that... Doctor Strange or Infinity Wars are ugly, and I I just don't know because Doctor Strange is one of my favorite ones in in this. Um, so I'm going to say Doctor Strange is your good, Infinity Wars ugly, and Captain Marvel's your bad. All right, Kelly. Interesting. Okay, I was going to guess Infinity War good, Mar Captain Marvel ugly, and Doctor Strange bad. Okay. My God. Uh, I'm going to say Infinity War good, Doctor Strange ugly, and Captain Marvel bad. And I have been really racking my brain uh, to try to figure out what your reasoning for it is. Because I think, you know, it's, it's almost like bad for MCU movie is still good for a lot of other movies. Right. So 
I, I've been trying to really justify or trying to think of why you would justify. And I can, I can, I think I've got the points. I think I've got yeah. the, I think I understand where you <laughs> decoded from. My... I, I mean, your brain, you know? Yeah. I psychoanalyzed your, your decision. Well, the one, the one I struggled most <laughs> with was, was the ugly pick. So, like, what, what would you guys think out of the, I think it's been 22 movies now. What would you pick as an ugly MCU movie? I don't know, because I've got a blank right here. I'm, I'm looking at a piece of paper right. where I wrote those down, and I have a blank because there's not one that's like, oh, it's so bad, but come on, you got to love it. Because right. I don't know. My, I don't know. There, there's, a, there's a few that I would say are definitely bad, though, for my, in my opinion. Um, I, I toyed with like Thor Ragnarok because they kind of took Thor and just threw his whole character out the window, right? And, like he's good, just though. but it's so good, right? Like I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, put it as ugly, uh, or just the premise of the premise of the uh, oh my god, I'm drawing a blank of the Star Killer, Star Lord, <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. The Galaxy. The premise is so ridiculous with this talking, you know, trash panda raccoon and but, the, but they're, they're so good. They too. are good. So, yeah. good. so anyway, all right. So let's let's get into it then. But we can we can parse okay. it out. All right, so you're uh, Doctor starting with Strange. Doctor Strange? Okay. Uh, 26, let me read a quick synopsis. And then I'll do the trailer. Marvel's Doctor Strange follows the story of the talented neurosurgeon Doctor Stephen Strange, who after a tragic car accident must put his ego aside and learn the secrets of a hidden world of mysticism and alternate dimensions. Based in New York City's Greenwich Village, Doctor Strange must act as an intermediary between the real world and what lies beyond utilizing a vast array of metaphysical abilities and artifacts to protect the Marvel Cinematic Universe. A long time. Okay, uh, synopsis. Okay, here's the trailer. Doctor Strange. You think you know how the world works? What if I told you the reality you know is one of many? This doesn't make any sense. Not everything does. Not everything has to. Through the mystic arts, we harness energy and shape reality. We travel great distances in an instant. How do I get from here to there? How did you become a doctor? Study and practice years of it. There's a strength to him. But is he ready? Be careful which path you travel down, Strange. Stronger men than you have lost their way. Death and pain. You'll die protecting this world. I can't do this. There is no other way. I've spent so many years peering through time, looking for you. What's this, my mantra? It's the Wi-Fi password. We're not savages. All right, that was the trailer for Doctor Strange, and it is my ugly pick. Wow. Micah was right. And I want to know, why do you think this is ugly for me? I, I guess because... It's it's so different for a Marvel movie, and okay, is it my my problems with you know I don't I want to I don't want to get into it too much, but it is very different. Um, it's good, you know. It's it's still good. Like I said, you know, for holding it up to some other 
uh, you know, movies and other franchises, it's still good. But um, I would agree with you about the Thor Ragnarok thing. It's so different. It's kind of strange, weird. Well, it's strange. There you go. Go figure. Doctor Strange. Yeah, so, th- I mean, this was probably my weakest pick because I had to choose something to be ugly and I really wanted to do MCU movies. Uh, but to me, like, Doctor Strange is a really great movie but it there's a lot of shameless things about it like just the all this this the graphics and the mind bendingness of it i was talking to my friend at work and he was like i liked it but they just kept doing it like they just kept doing the inception like world folding in on itself uh but i love that like i'm i'm a fan of shameless cgi but my main problem with this movie is the gaping plot holes that are where did all of the wizards go at the like throughout the whole movie, like where are all the wizards in the times that they need them? Right. Like, right. so you have, you have Dr. Strange who goes through his character arc and he's, he's training and you see all these people like training to use the fling, the sling rings and, and do all this stuff. And then, and then they get attacked, right? Like there's this huge attack on, I think what's the New York one. Uh, and so they go to the New York one and there's like this one wizard protecting hmm. against the, the three bad guys. And like, where are all the wizards who are supposed to be here protecting this thing? And then at the very hanging end, hanging on in Tibet, making circles. Right. <laughs> exactly. And then at, at the very end of the movie, like, oh, we're going to Tokyo, and there's going to be this big showdown with all of these wizards against the bad wizards, and it's and it's nobody. Like, even they even reverse time because some people said, oh, well, they already all got defeated, right? Because they they show up in Tokyo. Is it Tokyo? Am I getting the city right? Um, or- I think it's. Beijing. Beijing. Am I being racist right now? Yeah. Uh, but regardless, uh, they show up, and some of the, some people have defended it and said, "Well, they already got defeated, right? They showed up when it was already fallen." But no, he literally reverses time with the time stone, and there's only like three other wizards there defending it. So, and and it's not just me being nitpicky. I don't think because in theaters I was like waiting for this amazing fight scene with all these wizards fighting each other with magic, and then it just didn't happen. So, mm. uh, that that's one of my complaints. One, the one big, good. Oh, well, I was gonna. Since you're talking about plot holes, one big plot hole that you know, I, I, th- this one and another one that's on your list, uh, I almost like wish I could have, you know, uh, contributed a little bit to the script or something because they they missed an opportunity, and I think they could have done because it's an origin story and it's going it it starts back. Earlier in the MCU, I think it starts back around Iron Man 2 time frame. Yeah. They could have done a um, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, you know? Where it's like, you have, it's, the, it's the one, it's the movie, I think it was a play too, that it's the yeah. uh, characters from Hamlet and they're seeing Hamlet from their point of view. Right. It would have, I think it would have been cool to do almost that same type of thing, but Dr. Strange and you're seeing Dr. Strange's perspective of all these things that happened. Yeah. You know, and the reason why, you know, they didn't get involved with the alien invasion or right. when Ultron was making a mess of things, right. you know? Yeah. Missed opportunity. Yeah. When you, yeah, it's, it's hard to like, they have this whole thing universe they built and so everybody's going to be pulling at these threads so you kind of have to like let people pull the threads because i, I think you're right the same same with captain marvel i assume is the other movie you're mentioning where it's like where the heck was she this whole time mm-hmm. uh but but my only second thing i was going to say about this is to me sitting to me watching this i was thrown back to the last samurai with tom cruise where spoiler the last samurai is tom cruise i'm like wait what <laughs> Should the last samurai be like somebody who's actually like coming from the samurai culture? It's yeah. like, you know, Doctor Strange and we, you know, American movies do this. We, you know, we take everybody's culture and we put an American as the the protagonist. And there's like, I don't think that's bad necessarily. They're going to do that in India and they're going to put an Indian, you know, character in as the prota- protagonist. But yeah. like, it's just kind of weird seeing like Doctor Strange, this guy who, you know, was just a couple months ago egocentric and now he's a master of the mystical arts in in infinity war already and it's like he comes in and just like i'm amazing and I, i'm doing it better than anybody ever has oh, well let, let's cut through it's basically hey it's a good thing the white guy showed up to right. save the day, yeah you know? 
when you've got all these other people from all these other parts of the world that have been studying magic for years, and then he pops in the <laughs> scene and like, okay, white guy's here. I got this. Yeah. 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 British colonist here. <laughs> British, col- British colonizer here. I got this. But it is a great movie. I mean, I, I love I love watching it. It's a, it's really fun. I'd I'd watch it over and over again. I I I liked it too when it came out. I for some reason I liked it less the second time. Um, which is still, I mean, like you're saying, Micah, like still, it, it's it's a good movie, all things considered. But I think I'm <coughs> getting a little bit tired of the Sherlock Holmes house, Doctor Strange, like incredibly egocentric terrible man um is the protagonist and you're still supposed to like him anyway even though he's an a-hole and he sucks and he's extremely intelligent so we forgive him everything like i just i'm kind of uh, I'm like okay i guess i'll go along with that you you redeem yourself somewhat but he's Again. so awful i yeah yeah. My my brother in law has a theory that like people just love jerks. Like we love watching characters who are who are a holes, as you say. Like Seinfeld, yeah. they're all just bad people. Yeah, like the finale true. was them being God for being bad people, or Arrested Development, they're all terrible people. Yeah, but, uh, that's anyway. true. Yeah. All right, Charles. Charles what what do you think about Doctor Strange? Have you? It's it's Charles. I love this movie. Mark Wyatt. I love this movie. This is one of my favorite uh, Marvel movies. Um, so, yeah. But trademark quiet. I'm just letting <laughs> you guys hash it out. I just, I really do like this movie. And, uh, I think, uh, Mike is watching too. And, um, I, I know, I think he was really curious, um, which one you were going to go with, uh, Mark. Because I, sh- I, I showed him your list and I, I know he's a big fan of Doctor Strange. So, um, if you're listening, which I think he is, uh, Mark, You said Micah. No, Mike. Oh, Mike. Dr. Okay, Mike. Dr. Mike. Yeah, yeah Which... Dr. Mike just likes Doctor Strange because he's a doctor. He's yeah. representing. Yeah, that's quite true. So you just <laughs> dumped all over it. So, for, so if you didn't hear the beginning of that, uh, uh, Mark just said that Doctor Strange was an ugly movie, <laughs> and, then well, they, and then they all, all proceeded the... to trash it for having uh, a, an amazing character. I don't know why. I don't understand <laughs> this. <laughs> If I, if I had if I had to pick an ugly movie out of the MCU universe, just this one, like it was a fun watch. It was a it is a really good movie, but just some like just major plot holes. See for me some, for me, Captain Marvel would probably be an ugly movie for me. What would be your bad then? For for bad, there's a few. Like I would say um, the the Hulk movie, The Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton, is pretty bad. Yeah. Um, Iron Man two was pretty bad. Um. Uh, I don't like Thor two either. Um, yeah. So those those three are towards the bottom for me. Um, Captain Marvel is somewhere in the middle, and I and there's a and we I know we're not talking about it yet, but there's a lot of parts I don't like, and there's a part a lot of parts I really do like. So. All right. Well, let's get into it. Let's uh, let's move on to Infinity War two thousand eighteen. Okay. Um. Anything else you all want to say about? Doctor Strange. It's one of While the I best. I pull up a synopsis. What did you say? It's one of the best, and I love the plot and the effects, and the characters, and the movie. Well, you are wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> Infinity War. The uh, <laughs> the Avengers and their allies must be willing to sacrifice all in an attempt to defeat the powerful Thanos before his blitz of devastation and ruin puts an end to the universe. All right, and we're going to do the trailer. There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable people to see if we could become something more. So when they needed us, we could fight the battles that they never could. In time, you will know what it's like to lose. 
feel so desperately that you're right, yet to fail all the same. Dread it. Run from it. Destiny still arrives. Evacuate the city. Engage all defenses. And get this man a shield. Fun isn't something one considers when balancing the universe. But this... <laughs> does put a smile on my face. Right, that was mm-hmm. Infinity War. Last little stinger here. Yeah, 2018, and it is my good pick. Woo! Infinity War. Now, I have I've always told people that my favorite Marvel movie is Iron Man one, um, but in terms of being a great comic book superhero Marvel movie, Infinity War like is just I think blows it out of the park with what they were able to achieve in this movie with the, with all the crossovers they did and like this movie reignited my mm-hmm. interest in the franchise and like leading up to Endgame my wife and I recently like just rewatched every Marvel movie just just to get like ramped up for it and so like I, I mean every no 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 every MCU movie all 22 yeah all 21 wow uh, wow yeah. I, I know I'm I think there were a couple. I had some students who said they were doing it too, just from Iron Man all the way to to uh, Infinity War and Captain Marvel. I guess. I want. I want to do that. I want to do that sometime, for sure. But I yeah, that was good. Brave enough. And that was a, kind of what led. They had a theater to do these picks. They did that. Did they do like a several day theater run of it? Probably, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah. So the the other thing, like just starting at the end of this movie. I love the end because in theaters when I watched it, I sat there and and Thanos at the very end of the movie just gives this kind of sly, like, half smile. And that moment was like, oh, this movie is genius because the villain is the protagonist in this movie, right? This is Thanos' movie, which most people have picked up on. And, like, they were able to make him somewhat sympathetic to us. Like, he's evil, but he does have his philosophy. He has his ethics and he sticks to them. Uh, and like, you know, he's well trained. He, he the the other thing I love about this is is the bad guy's strategy. Like, they're so good at at strategizing, and and there's no there's none of these like tropes of uh, these kind of ridiculous action scenarios where it's like, why would they be doing this and telling us their plan, or like, mm-hmm. why don't they just shoot them now? There there are no moments in the movie where where I thought this is dumb and unrealistic, like. I don't know. They, they did such a good job. And also with the Infinity Stones, like there's so much power in these Infinity Stones. And I was expecting to be like, you know, like how are they going to, how are they even going to compete with one Infinity Stone? But but the way they, they work around it and try to keep the glove from closing and, you know, he's got to close his hand to use the glove and, and the way the good guys are able to strategize too was, it was just amazing. Like I never had to suspend my disbelief in this movie. Except for one little scene, which I'll talk about in a minute, and I'll let you guys say what you think. I agree. Uh, I mean, uh, with, with what you're saying, you know that it's it's a it's a comic book movie, and uh, you know I I grew up reading comic books, and you know they had a lot of these crossovers where you know all the characters would come together to fight the big bad, and um, it, it was almost unthinkable back when I was a kid, like, oh, but, 
realistically, yeah, they we've got these movies like we've got this, you know, we've got a Spider-Man movie and an X-Men movie and but there's no way that they could bring all all those actors together. Think of how much yeah. that would cost and you know, it was it was the, the the fact that they brought in what was it like it's like 70 something characters. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And they all it, have their moment who, to shine too. They're all they all have their really cool moments in this movie. Yeah. Right. Whoever is whoever is heading up Marvel Studios and the team they've built, like that's incredible. Is it Kevin like Kevin Fahey? Great, is that right? how you say his name? F E I G I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he yeah, he's the one that he's really good at it. And I mean it, you know, they whatever money they put in for it, they've reap the benefits quadruple or whatever yeah. you know i mean just because isn't, isn't uh, uh end game the highest grossing movie of all time now um Probably. i don't know of all time but in opening weekend it was. Yeah, it was competing i think it was com- still competing with titanic at one point but i'm sure it's i think it did i think it superseded all of them but i don't know uh oh. i mean um in, in that same vein of you know just great superhero movies Civil War, I put up there too. Uh, you know, Captain yeah. America: Civil War, because you know Doctor Strange. He... <laughs> but seeing all these love story, seeing all these characters come together. Uh, did you say love story? <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> what is love story? <laughs> well, <laughs> that, it, love means never having to say you're sorry, Mark. <laughs> Those agonizingly awful characters come together. That's just what you want in a cinema experience. Isn't it? Yeah. Terms of endearment. <laughs> anyway. My my only my only problem with this movie is the scene where um uh, on Titan they, they've almost got him and they're taking the glove off. They're almost got the glove off and and Star Lord Quill is like <laughs> It's like just start to punch him in the face, right? Like, no, you didn't get that. That was the only time I really, on if I have if I have to be honest, I did have to spin my disbelief a little bit of like, come on, dude, really, you almost got the glove off, and you're sitting there punching him in the face. But also, that's his kid. Like, he's a you know, he's kind of a hothead, and he just lost. He just realized he lost his you know his love, and Thanos killed her, and you know, so I get it, and I I know why it made sense, but it was a little over the top. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, and also with the with the way it ended, you knew characters couldn't be dead there because they got movies advertising. You know, there's gonna be next Spider Man, all these different things. Yeah. It's like so it, it takes away from the impact of the ending. Although it was still hard to watch. So yeah, yeah, but the way and we can talk about this if we do an end game review or something. But the way they brought them back wasn't just like oh, just kidding, we're back. You know, it was like there was still a cost. To it to their deaths like their death still meant something um and it still took a toll on everybody which which i really enjoyed right so and josh brolin i mean great yeah great but, decision to I, cast you know him. i was just about to say josh brolin did a just did a fantastic job and you know he's yeah, he's great as cable you know <laughs> yeah he's you know he's 50 percent cgi in that movie but still you know he, he was able to um be he was not over the top. He was very subdued. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but still convey what he needed to convey. And this was the first time that we really got to see the character of Thanos. You know, they've been building up, building them up. And I was afraid going into it like, oh, he's, he's just going to... People are going to be disappointed that he's, he's just another villain. But the fact that, like you said, they made him the protagonist almost. And that you walked out of there going, gosh... I, I feel for Thanos. I feel for the guy that just, you know, decimated 50% yeah. of the universe. I feel for him. Yeah. And had to I got to correct daughter. you, Micah. De- decimate is to reduce by 10%. You're right. I know. Yes. <laughs> uh, English I major know. here. There. Uh, Dialect. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. And uh, the, the other thing, like, the fight scenes are great. Like all of the action sequences are like amazingly staged and choreographed, and like the the fight scene at the end with with the battling warriors and just the overall tone of menace. I mean, it's like I could just watch this over. I was so glad they put it on Netflix so I could just stream it 
And I would just watch I mean, some of the fight not, scenes. Not for and, long, though, right? Yeah. Is it still? I think it's still on there now. Well, I'm saying but, they're they're doing their Disney Plus in November, and I'm I'm assuming they'll take off all the Marvel movies when that comes yeah. out. Mm. Yeah, a lot of the Disney, a lot of the like, just the the classic Disney movies have vanished from Netflix. Mm-hmm. Trace had. All right. All right. Cool. Let's do the next one. Last but not least is Captain Marvel. 2019 and i shall read a synopsis as soon as i pull it up on my phone right now uh carol danvers becomes one of the universe's most powerful heroes when earth is caught in the middle of a galactic war between two alien races and here is the trailer hard to explain. I keep having these memories. I see flashes. I think I had a life here. But I can't tell if it's real. no idea what threats are out there. We can't do this alone. We need you. I'm not what you think I am. All right, and that is the trailer for the worst Marvel movie to date. Hey, guys, did you know it takes place in the 90s? (laughs) (laughs) What? So I don't know if the blockbuster Game Boys, uh, Street Fighter 2, gosh, what else? uh, Grunge Rock, Grunge Jacket, (laughs) Nirvana. So, as I was saying, I, I don't consider this the worst one. I definitely think... There's worse Marvel movies, Iron Man two and uh, Thor two, and the Incredible Hulk. I definitely think those are worse. No, I think it's <laughs> once again, Charles, you were wrong. Do you, I mean, I, what do you? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one. Okay, I, here, I, here, my my sole my sole defense of this being the worst movie is that I went to see it in theaters. I was super excited. This is coming off of Infinity War, so maybe my expectations were set too high. But I was literally just bored in the theater watching this movie. Like, no, nothing engaged me about this movie. Um, and I think it's because the main character doesn't change, right? Like, like, mo- like the, the, one of the fundamental rules of, like, storytelling is that a character has to, like, undergo some sort of change. And, like, the change that she undergoes is realizing that she doesn't need to change. Right at the end, she's like, no, I'm amazing. You guys are holding me down. But that's not – like everything is external and nothing is happening internally, right, other than her just being an awesome kick-A girl superpower, you know, girl power like thing. And so uh, – and, you know, that paired with the the Nick Fury stuff was kind of like a letdown for me. I wanted, I wanted to see more from him and like more hints as to his like kind of mythic – Nature, and I get that he's playing the mentor role in this movie, and that it's not him being heroic. But I wanted to see, you know, especially between him and um, and what's his face, I'm drawing a blank. The Agent Coulson. Coulson. Agent Coulson. Yeah, I wanted to see more there, and like 
the the bones of this movie are really good. I just it just didn't click with me, and I was just I was just bored the whole time. And the, the plot twist didn't didn't interest me. And I knew she was human the whole time. And I knew she, you know I I, don't I know. like the villain, and I like. And and I like the de aging effect for Nick Fury. I thought it was an amazing effect. They really, I think it's one of the best ones I've seen. Yeah, they did a good job of that. Especially because, but it doesn't make it a good movie. Well, I know, but I'm saying, it, it, in some way, it 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 does because for me at least, because it's that it just looked real. It looked like Samuel Jackson did in the '90s, and I and for him being a main character in the movie, that was really impressive. So, like in some ways, it it really did feel like a proper prequel. Um, so I, I remember like when I, when he, when he only first knocks on the window at Blockbuster or whatever, and she, like, people in the audience kind of gasp because they, you know, he takes off his sunglasses and I, I just feel like you're witnessing something we haven't seen before in that regard. Right. I'm not saying it makes a great, and I agree with you, Mark. I wish he'd have been, uh, more central and more, you know, more of the main character, but it's not his movie either. So. You know, maybe we'll get maybe we'll no, get a I chance. To... I mean, like in Spider-Man: Homecoming trailer, or yeah, is it is it Homecoming? Is that the next one's called? No, Far From Home. No, Far, Far from, from Home. Okay, so in that trailer though, like they show Nick Fury currently, and like I wonder if he'll take on a, a bigger role in that. Well, but he, he's he, always the he was kind of missing. The... He was kind of missing in Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I didn't want him to be more central. I wanted him to be more of Nick Fury, like more like. Or or see I don't know just see like hints because he was just like kind of everyday normal guy in this movie with a little bit of background in military yeah. CIA but I, I guess wanted, I just like, I guess I being more central to the plot because it did seem like he kind of got pushed aside uh, at a certain point where he's just kind of tagging along is the way I felt anyway like I wish he would have yeah. been more central uh, and more Nick Fury I mean I wish both. Yeah, for me, as as hyped as this movie was, and as much as everybody was talking, talking, talking about the first, you know, Marvel female superhero movie, I wanted it to be amazing and fulfilling like Black Panther was for, you know, the first African American or the yeah. first minority. Or, yeah. You know, that yeah. that totally lived up to the hype. And it, it took everything, the people that were most excited about it, wanted to see and just elevated it even further and i feel like that did not happen with captain right. marvel it was just another movie and i and so not that it was like that bad really but it just was it was disappointing because it could have been so much better well i think this is a i think this is a huge pitfall that people fall into with like girl power characters yeah is that they think it's enough for them to be girls and powerful. And yeah, it's not but like it's they not. Have to, they have to be good characters, too. Like, they they have to have flaws, right? Like, right. that's what makes a good character a good character. Right. And the same thing happened in, in Endgame. During the fight scene, they were like, you know, all the girls were together on the battlefield, and they were about to do something. I forget what it was, do something. But then nothing happened from it. It was just like, <laughs> we're girls, and we're powerful, and we're here. And it's like, come on. Like, you've got to well, put in the work to make them engaging characters i know they were they've been trying to do this and they're gonna they have it scheduled but it, they should have done a black widow movie yeah, yeah i think that would have been the much more significant movie to do as the first female-led superhero movie on the marvel side if they had done that because she is an engaging character right. you know there's mm-hmm. a lot to her she's uh she's a very um tortured character and captain marvel you you're totally right mark she doesn't go through her character development she you know all you all you see in the flashbacks is she's even her the falling flashbacks you know she's not gonna take it she's gonna stand right back up and that is her resolution oh yeah i remember i stand (laughs) up you know (laughs) like that's that's her big resolution and and they never show us who she is before the event, before the the explosion of the the engine. Like the only, and and that's another great storytelling law is show don't tell, right? And all they do is tell us who she was. They don't show us who she was, and what kind of person she even is, other than she's a good person and she's powerful. Okay, uh, all the support, all the supporting characters are more interesting, by the way. Right? Like, yeah. Right. The, the ones you're talking about, they. They tell us how interesting she was, and, and it's like, 
well, okay. Like, I wish I could have seen that in your interaction with her. Yeah. And this is this is a problem that a lot of comic book franchises have to deal with, especially with Superman, is with overpowered characters who are also super virtuous, like Superman is. Like, there's still got to be some driving flaw or weakness or, like, internal struggle somehow to keep us interested. Well, Superman is, just... is, is that his mother is named Martha, like Batman's mom. Right, that's, right. Right. that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Obvious. Like, it can be done. I'm not saying that overpowered characters are not engaging. It can be done. I just haven't seen it done yet. Like, with she, Thanos, they did. And right? she is way too powerful. I mean, that's a, that's a problem, too, because then you have to... They have to figure out ways why she's not there. Like, why didn't she? Yeah, right. And that that just felt or, really or forced. Or put a little neck thing on her to reduce her powers. But like, I mean, even, this is... even in like Infinity right. War Endgame, it's like you, you had to figure out why wasn't she there. Oh, she right. was off right. on a different part of the galaxy. Okay. Yeah. So, Charles, I want to I wanna weigh in here about that because that is – I was talking about missed opportunities with Doctor Strange. This is a big missed opportunity with Captain Marvel. And let me say, I really did enjoy the movie itself, but when it – ended i was like okay this doesn't explain anything because i was i was waiting for some explanation so what i think that they should have done is yes she's physically powerful and she could have single-handedly taken on all the things that have happened over the past 10 years i think that she should have left the planet because of a uh relationship issue you know and, uh, you know, they, they had a good setup with the um, Maria Rambo. Her, uh, was that her friend's name? Is that right? I can't remember. Like, I, think I just, I literally yeah. watched it today and I can't remember. Like, if she had had some type of, like, serious falling out with her, you know? Like, I mean, where they, you know, they, they had a huge argument and they couldn't make amends. And she was like, fine, you know, you know what? I'm just going to leave the planet. And she's gone, and it's almost like now she, she has a uh, more of a reason why she didn't come back, other than just, hey, I got a lot of other planets to police people. I don't yeah. have time for Earth, but like there's now there's like she there's this um, thing or flaw in her character of uh, you know she has a, a a bad relationship with Earth or somebody on Earth that yeah. that reason why she hasn't come back why she's completely abandoned it it's the same type of thing as like uh the reluctant hero coming back to their hometown you know yeah. there's reason like why did you leave well there's some things that happen i don't want to talk about you know yeah it, it it could have been something as i hate to say easy but really as easy as that you know just some type of uh relationship conflict that she had yeah and that's the reason why she hasn't been around they did it well with Thor is that, and, you know, we're talking about in-game here, but in in-game, Thor is in a deep depression, you know? He's, he has a, uh, you know, a psychological depression uh, uh, that he, he's, he can't conquer, you know? That, and that's the reason why he hasn't been more of a presence as a hero, just, just to say, you know, as as a one off, like whenever they do address it in Endgame, well, where the heck were you during all this? And she's and her response is, "Hey, I got a lot of other planets. The universe is a big place." And they don't have the Avengers, yeah. Yeah, I don't. Because the thing is, when they do that, they're saying, "Oh, the reason is she's perfect, right? Like yeah. she's she's this amazing character who's so giving that she's taking care of everybody else." And right. that does and, not make for, for and, like and exciting see, tension or conflict mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and just to do, you know, to try to set it up for a sequel, what the heck is the sequel going to be about the Captain Marvel sequel? Cause it's like, yeah. okay, so she's, she's figured out that she has godlike powers and taking it out. Hala, do do maybe somehow what? taking down, taking down Hala. I'm still, I'm still marking on where all of that is right now. So, like, Ronan was a Kree, or was at least yes. allied with Kree. And yes, he was a Kree. We took care of him with, uh, with Guardians of the Galaxy, but, like, have well, we heard anything from them since? Chronologically? No. Micah, you're the expert. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. He's, 
No, because at the end of Mar- Captain Marvel, it sounded like she was going to go and do like that's what she told Jude Law's character. I'm going to go and you know take take out the take out Hala and yeah. So that was my assumption. So I don't know if she's done that already by the time she well, came back. And we need a lot of early 2000 references. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon Go. Yeah. All right. So are, are we are we wrapping up? Are you guys anything to say? No. It you takes. can check us out. No, I'm kidding. Charles, you want to get does do we have an announcement from Charles or Kelly or Micah? I don't know what's happening. There's some mystery. No what do you mean? What's happening? What's what's going on? I thought you had picks, Charles. I have no idea what you're talking about. No, I do. Um yes, I do. Um in fact I uh I uh was gonna say for um so we did uh we're gonna have to push back Kelly's again. Sorry, Kelly. I do <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelly. Surprise, said no one. <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> oh, All right. Poor so, well, no. We're going to do movies in which women are belittled. And... Well, I'm just, I'm, just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying we did we did, we did, did two tonight for June. We did the LGBT and Mark. Yeah, yeah. So she already got bumped slightly kind of this time. But for July, we're going to do a different big. And and, um, and it's, it's uh, as we mentioned earlier, Dr. Mike's listening um, I'm sure he's very angry at you, Mark, for trashing, and all of you for trashing. Doctor I didn't Strange. trash Doctor Strange. It's a good watchable movie. It's a it's my ugly pick. Yeah, but you put it ugly. That's like in the same category as the room. Um, anyway, <laughs> no, it's not. The room is bad. <laughs> the room is ugly. Um, the room is a bad movie. I would watch that a million times. That I have. Um, so anyway. Oh hi, Stephen Strange. <laughs> oh hi. Oh hi, Micah. Oh hi, Mark. <laughs> um, okay, but so. Uh, he wants to do, he, originally he wanted to do Pixar films because of Toy Story 4, but I, you know, I told him we'd already done that. He didn't want to rehash it. Unlike some people. And, um, so, whoa, so then, whoa, whoa. So then, <laughs> at me right now, Charles. So then, so then completely so, different genres. So okay? then he decided he wanted to do Tom Hanks movies. So, there you go. so for July, which is uh, Toy Story 4 comes out at the end of this month, 4th of July, we're going to do Tom Hanks movies. And again, these are Dr. Mike's picks, and he'll be our guest on the next one. Um, so, so he picked, uh, I, I, these are going to be interesting, The Bonfire of the Vantages from 1990, Joe vs. the Volcano, also from 1990, and That Thing You Do from 1996. What okay. I I wow all right. That's funny because I looked into I looked into Bonfire of the Vanities for my for my book movie book movies. So, what was the last thing, uh, girls? Uh, that thing you do from '96. I don't know about this. I don't know how I so, feel at all. None of his Oscar. I said the same <laughs> movie. Here's actually what I said. I told him I have no idea which is which, and he wrote back, "That's the idea." <laughs> Which is also a room quote. So it's like, that's the idea. Like, I don't know. <laughs> nice. so, so it all comes back. It to all the comes room. back. I, don't, yeah, yeah. I didn't know the he loved the room as much as I did. But yeah. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Like, I, I don't know which one's going to be as good. Uh, I nope. don't know. This is one of those categories where I just, it's going to be an interesting listen to, I think. Just because really, I mean, if you had to pick. Have you guys seen all those movies or no? I've seen. Two. I've seen Joe versus the volcano. I don't I've think I've seen that thing you do. Maybe I have. I haven't seen Bonfire of the Vanities. Yeah, I've not seen yeah. Bonfire. If I had to guess, that one's going to be as bad. That's a pretty terrible movie. But anyway, we'll we'll see. I I don't know. Right. I I don't know. But I think it's a okay. cool pick, and uh, yeah. And then the next time after that, Kelly, we, unless you want to do two in July, we can we can do yours then too if you have a topic. Kelly, you got a picks? Are you prepared uh, no, today? No, no. All right, there we go. Okay. So, She's good. So I'm then good, I don't feel too yeah. bad. So like, yes, Kelly, I'm fitting you in. What do you got? Nothing. Okay, fine. Nothing. <laughs> um, no, but, that, no, that's, but that, that's cool. Like, So that'll be July, and then, Kelly, you'll be in August, and then um, I'll go in September, and I have, I, a, I I have, have a choice uh, for that. I've never talked to Dr. Mike other than as Krampus. Uh, That's what? The only interaction I've ever had with Dr. Mike. Yeah. What are you talking about? That wow. wasn't him. Oh well, whatever. Yeah, that was, that was whatever that was. I had just thought maybe. All right. 
Okay, guys. Well, this is the end, so you can check us out at itsjustawesome.com or on iTunes and Twitter at Good Bad Podcast, and that is all one word. Thanks again for listening to us, and uh, thank you, Micah, for partaking. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. All right, bye. Bye -bye.